Hi everybody and welcome back to Dauntless TV, I'm Marcus and today I'm really excited for this video because I'll be testing my brand new 14 inch MacBook Pro. It's all spec'd out except the 2TB SSD. I had this laptop for a few days and today I'm going to do an initial review especially catered for the creatives and filmmakers out there. I'm going to do some test benchmarks, I'm going to do some initial impressions that I have, some good, some bad. I want to compare it against my desktop computer which has a Ryzen 3900X and GTX 2080 Super. I want to see whether or not I can replace my desktop with this small 14 inch uh, MacBook Pro. Also, I'm recording this whole video on the new MacBook Pro's 1080p FaceTime camera and the audio that you're hearing right now is from the internal mics of the MacBook Pro. Right, so without further ado, let's get into it. All right, let's dive straight into it. So give you some context, this 14 inch MacBook that I bought is maxed out, meaning it has the M1 Max chip, the 32 core GPU and 10 core CPU, and it has two terabytes of storage. It has 64 gigabytes of unified memory. One important thing to know is that the unified memory is not like RAM. Well, it is RAM, but it's more than RAM. It's very, very fast RAM. It's so fast, that your GPU can use it as a video memory. Now, what's the difference between RAM and video memory? Well, you know when you buy a graphics card, it has comes with variants of RAM. My RTX 2080 Super has 8 gigs of RAM. The MacBook technically can go up to 64 gigabytes. Now that's 8 times more than my 2080 Super. So unified memory means that the CPU and the GPU can share the memory space. That means the computer can allocate where the RAM should go. If you're doing very video intensive tasks like 3D or editing, then the GPU can use more of the unified memory. Well, why, why is that important to me is because I use Blender for my 3D task and you want to import big 3D models and assets into Blender, it takes up a lot of VRAM, video RAM. Even my RTX 2080 Super sometimes can't handle it, but my MacBook can. And I'll show you one example later. Now let's dive straight into it and talk about the performance. I know that's what all creatives want to know. How good is it at editing? How smooth is it? How fast is it? Well, I'm going to get to it. I gotta say, I'm very, very impressed with what I have. So right, the first test we're going to do is we're going to do a DaVinci Resolve test and then we're going to do a Premiere Pro test and then we're going to do a Blender test. Now these tests are going to be against my desktop computer. So there are two main criteria that I want to look at. The first thing obviously is how fast it renders. The second, which I think is more important, is how smooth playback is and how easy it is to scrub and edit. And I think that's when you save the most time. Let's jump into the first test. First, we're going to do a DaVinci Resolve grading test. Now, this test only focuses on the color grading. I basically color graded ProRes 444 footage and exported them as 1080p H.264 files. So here are the results. The MacBook took 3 minutes and 1 second and it was very responsive. Playback was very smooth and the scrubbing was very smooth. I did not encounter any hiccups and the desktop took 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And just like the MacBook, it was very responsive. Now the next test is more interesting. This time is a general test where there were multiple clips and motion graphics, text elements as well as some other effects. I exported 4.6K B-RAW 12x1 to 1080p H.264. Now the MacBook scored 5 minutes and 14 seconds for this render and playback was pretty responsive. While on the other hand, the desktop scored 7 minutes and 6 seconds. Now that's a massive difference. And even worse, it was not as responsive as my MacBook Pro. Now let's move on to the Blender test. For this Blender test, we're going to use the Cycles render engine at 1080p, 250 samples, open image denoiser, and I'm going to run a test twice. One with 256 pixel tile size and another with 32 pixel tile size. Now, the MacBook scored 19 minutes and 3 seconds. When while I was in the Cycles viewport, it was pretty responsive with Open Denoiser on. Keep in mind that this render actually needed 14 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, for my desktop, this is where things got 
worse. My desktop actually crashed and couldn't render or view the scene in Psycho's viewport. I suspect it's because it only had 8GB of VRAM available. However, the RTX probably would score a faster render because of the optics optimization by Blender. So I hope that Blender eventually supports M1 Max to make use of the 32 cores of GPU power instead of just using the CPU to render. Now let's move on to the 32 pixel tile size render and unsurprisingly the MacBook scored 16 minutes and 8 seconds which is almost 3 minutes faster than the previous tile size and this is because CPUs render faster with a smaller tile size and yet again my desktop had actually crashed and I can't render or view so therefore I cannot even work on the project. Now the Premiere Pro test is done by John Almas. I wanted to run the Puget test for my own system but something occurred and I can't run it. That's why I'm using John Almas test to show you guys. Please note that his system is a Ryzen 5950X and RTX 3090 with 128 gigs of RAM. That's insane. And the results are gonna shock you. For the Premiere Pro test, the MacBook scored 53 seconds while the desktop it's got 2 minutes and 5 seconds. Now that's insane amount of difference. To further make sure my results were accurate, I also compared my results with his DaVinci Resolve results and look what I found. The MacBook scored 36 seconds while the desktop scored 1 minute. That's almost twice as fast. And just like my general test that I did in DaVinci Resolve, these results are mind blowing. The MacBook is faster than desktops. Now besides the benchmarks and the creative stuff that I just showed, I want to say some things that really stood out to me while using this laptop. Number one is the speakers. The speakers are amazing. MacBooks already have really good speakers in the past, but this takes it up to the next level. While I realized that the 16 inch actually sounds louder and has a little bit more bass. So if you want really good speakers and don't want to compromise, the 16 inch is the way to go. Next thing that I didn't know would be so amazing is that you can open the screen with one hand. I, only, I always remember that my 15 inch, I always have to use two hands to open it, but opening it with one hand now, it seems like night and day, and it's really, really convenient to me. Second thing is that instant wake. I never thought that I would fall in love with this feature, but I did, and every time I just open my MacBook, immediately it will wake up, and I could, do, I could be productive, and I could use my computer straight away without waiting. Another thing is that the battery life when you are sleeping is amazing. I had Blender, I had DaVinci and After Effects open in the background with projects on but once I let it sleep, it didn't drain the battery at all, not even 1%. I let it sleep for 1 or 2 hours and it was still the same battery that I left it before I slept it. So really really good. To end the video, I'm going to go through some stuff. Uh, specifically for color grading and uh, you can skip that if you're not a color grader but after that I'm going to answer some questions that were left to me uh, on Instagram story so let's go now for those color grading there's some things you need to keep in mind first you gotta realize that this is an XDR DCI P3 monitor if you want to deliver for web you may want to view your work in sRGB or Rec. 709 viewing standards so if you click the control center you can change the display options to display different quick presets for different delivery standards and different viewing standards. You can use Rec. 709 or sRGB if you are delivering for the web. But be warned, if you use sRGB, you cannot change the brightness. Also, remember to turn off True Tone and Night Shift when you're color grading. However, if you still want to use Apple's XDR display at the full 1600 nits of brightness, then follow these steps instead to make sure that your footage is viewed properly. First, go into DaVinci Preferences then click use Mac display color, save. You may see that your image is washed out, but go to preferences again, go to color management, and choose the corresponding timeline color space. I'm using sRGB. Now I use this settings and I compared it to my calibrated color grading monitor, and this is as close as I could get them to match. Now here's a quick hack for those people that are using the 14 inch and one more space. Go to preferences, go to displays, and then click on more space. When I was viewing in DaVinci, Premiere Pro and After Effects, I would have liked a more spaced out uh, screen, which gives me about the same amount of space as the 16 inch. 
not in terms of screen size, but text, timeline, and icon real estate. Now here I have some of the questions I've been asked on Instagram. Number one is, is the battery life as good as it claims? If rendering videos and doing creative work, such as editing video, then I would think it will last around two to four hours. But if you're just browsing the web and you're just watching videos, I think Apple's claim uh, for the battery life is about accurate minus two to three hours. Overall, I think the battery life is pretty good, especially on the 16 inch. The next question, uh, how does the new MacBook do with DaVinci Resolve? Does it handle it well? Well, I'm glad to say um, that DaVinci 17.4, I believe, works five times faster on M1 chips. It definitely feels that way. I would definitely replace my desktop with this MacBook if I want to do editing. The playback smoothness is a lot better than on my desktop and the render times are almost comparable and uh, as the results say that most of the times um, the MacBook actually wins in terms of render times compared to my desktop and other people's desktops. So yes, a uh, continuation for the question with regards to the DaVinci question, what spec should I be on or should I be looking at? So the specs you should be looking at definitely if you want to edit the best on DaVinci Resolve would be the M1 Max with the 10 core and 32 um, core GPU and also the 64 gigabytes if you have the money but I think 32 should be the minimum if you're editing uh, videos. So next question, how does it hold up compared to PC for editing videos or photos? Well it's a no brainer question, it is a lot better. The whole experience of editing videos and photos on the MacBook is so smooth. And one, one word I would describe it is just really smooth and responsive and fast. And I did on my Windows desktop. I can tell you that um, with Windows, while you get really good compatibility with almost all apps, it sometimes is really, really buggy and sometimes it doesn't work and times it just lags. I can't review uh, my timeline properly and I have to guess whether or not something will come out properly. Well, on the Mac, the playback smoothness and the render times are just really, really good. Next question, worth it? or just get the older MacBook Pro at cheaper cost. Well, it really depends on what you're doing. For me, I'm my job is to edit videos, make videos, and I do a lot of um, video editing and 3D work. So f obviously for me, my job pays for my laptop. So therefore for me, I would say it's definitely worth it, even though it's very, very expensive. For people that just generally edit simple videos, do some simple photo editing, and browse the web mainly and, and, and do some emailing and, and stuff like that, uh, I would recommend you to go at least with the M1 uh, MacBook Pro. Not the M1 Pro, but just the M1 baseline MacBook Pro. Or if you, have, if, you are, if you have more pocket money, then I would obviously advise you to go to the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Yeah. I would avoid Intel chips on a MacBook Pro um, from now on and just go with the M1 because Apple Silicon would definitely be the future of computing. Too long didn't read buy or don't buy? Again, hard to say. For a student, um, I would advise you to get the MacBook Air uh, with the M1 chip. If you are a bit more adventurous, maybe get the M1 Pro MacBook if you had more pocket money. So I would say the two things, if I was a student I would, and I didn't have to edit videos, I would go with the M, the MacBook Air definitely. Um, it can do light editing, it can do light Photoshop, and it's basically good for most of the needs. And the battery life on the M1s are really very good, and even better than the M1 Max's battery life on the 14 inch. So definitely all day battery life is really good for that. And that's why I would recommend if you're a student, or you know, yeah, if you're a student or working that doesn't need this laptop to be your workhorse editing station. Now, if you, are, if you are a video content creator, a 3D artist, and do heavy rendering and editing of videos, definitely go with the M1 Max. This laptop is really game-changing. In such a small form factor, it can beat my desktop in responsiveness and render times, and even full, fully utilizing the M1 chip. So I'm really, really excited to see what Apple has installed in the future years, and how Apple Silicon is being adopted in the industry. Already very thick and heavy. Well, I've had my hands on the 16 inch and the 14 inch. The 16 inch is definitely a lot heavier than 14 inch, and I had a 15 inch uh, MacBook Pro last time. So, 
the my 15 inch MacBook Pro actually is a lot thinner than the 16 inch. So the 16 inch is a really thick boy, and the 14 inch also is a bit thicker than the normal 13 inch. So definitely, definitely thicker and heavier. But I don't think it's so heavy and cumbersome that you can't take it around, especially for the 14 inch. But the 16 inch, you definitely need a bigger bag. You, I cut, I couldn't fit a 16 inch into my bag at all. So if you're going for the 16 inch, beware, it's thick and it's definitely heavy. I know there was another question uh, about whether or not this would be a, a good laptop for streaming, especially in your in, in your live streaming industry. I would say definitely this laptop would be amazing for streaming, especially with all the connections that you have um, and the speed of the processor and responsiveness of the UI. I don't think you can go wrong with streaming on this uh, laptop, even the base M1 Pro model. So that's all the questions and that is my initial review of the MacBook. So far, I'm really, really very impressed with the machine. It's definitely going to replace my desktop for most tasks, maybe not for 3D rendering, but for most tasks when I'm doing work in the software. Definitely can take it anywhere and do all the work that I need to do. I'm super happy with this purchase, definitely. Now this video took really really long to do and I hope that you guys liked it and hope that it's informative. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this video if, if you liked it. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. So thank you guys for watching and see you.